Hello everyone. Thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. I am Neeti Saxena and I am teaching the subject Principles and Practices of Management. And this particular uh, video would be covering a very important topic which is recruitment and selection. See, in uh, you know, if you look at this picture, it gives you an impression wherein you know recruitment and selection is just like a filtering process wherein you attract a lot of candidates for your organization and then finally filter and get the best out of uh, the lot. Now, if going in detail of what recruitment and selection is, first of all, before I take up what is uh, what are the factors that influence recruitment, let me just tell you what recruitment is all about. Recruitment is basically attracting employees, attracting people towards your organization in a way that uh, when you have a vacancy in your organization, there is a lot of people who apply for your organization. So recruitment is a positive process wherein you want more and more people to apply for the vacancies that you have in your organization. What are the factors that influence recruitment? Let's talk about first external forces, demand and supply. What happens is in an industry, if there is a lot of demand of uh, labor, demand of employees and the supply is less, then automatically your recruitment procedure will get impacted because there would be less of people who would be applying for your organization because already in the market or in the industry, the number of people are less who would be applying for the job. If we take another scenario wherein demand is less and supply is more that means the positions vacant in the industry is less and the number of people are more so automatically when you have a vacancy in your organization there would be a lot of people who would be applying similarly unemployment rate if the unemployment rate is high that means more people are unemployed then automatically the moment you have a vacancy in your organization there would be a lot of people who would be applying vice versa in case if the unemployment rate is less then there are, there are less of people who are available in the market. So when you have a vacancy in your organization, there would be less of people who would be applying for that job. Third is labor market. Labor market is a number of people available in the market to apply for a particular position. That depends a lot on the company profile. It also depends upon the location. For example, if you have a factory or if you have an office which is at a remote place, automatically the labor market available would be less. If you have your office at a place wherein which is reachable by a number of different people, so your labor market would be such that you know more people would be available. Political, legal, social justice and company image. This is something which is related to uh, what the company is doing for the society, how the company is looked by the people in terms of a recruiter, in terms of an employer, in terms of corporate social responsibility, in terms of what is the growth rate of the organization, what is the sustainability of the organization. So what happens is, let's say if, in, if I give you an example, if you have to choose between two companies, uh, you have an offer letter from both the companies, you would be definitely looking forward to, to work with a company which is sustainable and which is really doing good in the market, which has a reputed name. Similarly, uh, when we talk about the uh, political, legal and social justice is something related to the political and legal environment of the country. In case if everything is favorable, uh, you will find that a lot of people would be available for the uh, your organization. If we talk about the internal forces, recruitment policy, HRP, HRP is human resource planning, size of the firm, cost, growth and expansion and organizational culture are certain things which impacts the uh, psychology of people. For example, if I talk about Google, Google has an impression that uh, Google is a very uh, friendly employer. They take care of their employees very well. They give a lot of perks, a lot of incentives, a lot of flexibility to the employees. And Google, of course, is a very reputed organization. So there are a lot of people who would like to work with Google. Now, there can, there can be a company which might not be treating its employees really nicely, which doesn't give pay on time, which doesn't have uh, good recruitment policies. The size of the firm is small, so automatically there would be less number of people who would be applying for that organization. So let me just summarize before we move on to the next slide. Recruitment is basically attracting people to your organization, attracting n number of different candidates to apply for the vacancy that you have in your organization. And there are certain factors which affect recruitment. If everything is favorable for the organization, you'll find a lot of people who would be applying for 
job in your organization in case if the conditions are not favorable you will find there would be nobody who would be applying for a job for example when we talk about good companies they already have such a beautiful recruitment pool of candidates that they really do not have to wait long to fill a particular position because the company is good automatically they'll get good candidates for their organization if the organization is bad or has a bad image in the market or maybe the labor market is not available maybe the demand is too much and the supply is less than automatically the number of people who would be applying for your organization or the vacancy in your organization would be less this is the recruitment process first comes planning strategy development searching screening evaluation and control first of all is human resource planning which comes into picture which we have discussed in the previous uh, videos also that uh, the, the hr department needs to understand how many people are required in the organization today in the coming future are this uh, is there a surplus number of employees or you have shortage of employees in case if you have shortage of employees then you move to the next uh, step which is strategy development that is you will think from where you can get the right kind of an employee will you go for campus recruitment would you go for internal recruitment would you go for uh, maybe um, a consultant maybe you will give an ad in the newspaper so you actually have to decide a strategy in case if it is an entry level job maybe you can go for campus placement in case if it is a very high level profile then maybe you would be uh, targeting some of your competitors company and then from there you would pick up uh, the right person for your organization so that strategy needs to be developed as in how would you be recruiting until what time you need to close the recruitment process then is searching searching is basically based on whatever strategy that you have developed you would search for the right kind of labor market you would search for the right kind of consultant or you would search for the right kind of campus from where you can pick up the people you would screen and finally uh, screening is basically that you would collect all those um, resumes and you will keep it for the next process which is selection uh evaluation and control is something that you know whenever we do any process be it recruitment training selection performance appraisal anything and in the end we evaluate how was our, uh, our recruitment process for example if we talk about let's say if you chose that okay not uh, we would not be hiring directly but we, we might go through a consultant so once the consultant has given you the resume you would evaluate that did you choose the right consultant were you able to meet your target on time if not if there was a lacuna you, you would look into it that how in future you can uh, uh, have a control uh, on the on the negative factor that had uh, affected the recruitment so this is the recruitment process planning first you'll plan then you will develop a strategy based on the strategy you will search for the right uh, process or the right uh, uh, campus or newspaper through which you would be putting an ad and then you will screen it and finally evaluation and control now there can be multiple sources of recruitment as i said that you know you might go through a consultant you might uh, 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 take a membership in an online portal or uh, you might uh, look for internal recruitment so based on the n number of different types of so when we talk about the sources of recruitment the recruitment sources can be of two types internal recruitment and external recruitment internal recruitment is when the recruitment is done from within the organization you are not going to any external source of uh, recruitment internal source of recruitments could be present employees employee referrals former employees or previous applicants what happens is that in case if you have a position which is vacant you can think of that can we fill this particular position with the help of the current employees that we have maybe with the help of a promotion transfer job rotation so that is you use the current employees in a way that you're able to fill that particular position that is called as internal recruitment with the help of present employees second is employee referrals you can ask your current employees to give referral for a, for that particular position and there are certain organizations which also give uh, uh, monetary incentive to the uh, employee who gives a good referral and in case of his referral is recruited finally selected and placed in the organization so employee referral is basically when you ask your current employees to give uh, references in case if that particular reference 
uh, that was given by the employee gets recruited and placed in the organization then there are certain organization which even gives monetary benefit to the employee who had referred that particular person third is former employees what you can do is that you can either go back to the employees who were working with you earlier and then you can ask them in case if they want to rejoin the organization it also happens that uh, at times the people who retired from your organization you would want them back uh, in your organization to work so that is how you do not have to look into uh, looking for uh, new employees for your organization but could be from the uh, pool of uh, employees who were already working with your organization in the past then as previous applicants maybe you had a similar position vacant previously and you had uh, generated lot of data in uh, terms of applications uh, for that particular position then you if you have that position vac vacant again or a similar position vacant then you can look into the uh, previous applicants and then you can uh, actually ask some people to come and uh, give interview so that is called as previous applicants so i would repeat it once again internal recruitment is when you are not taking the help of any external source but you are utilizing your current employees or you are generating referrals from your employees or you are uh, re-recruiting the employees who had worked with you earlier or if you have certain previous applications which were generated or which were collected in case if similar position was vacant earlier too there are certain advantages of internal sources and disadvantages too advantages are, is that you know the candidate strength and weaknesses how because just in case if you have promoted a, a person or you had transferred that person there is an internal recruitment that has happened with the uh, by using the current employee so you already know you know what kind of employee this person has been in the past so you know the strength and weakness of that person Uh, in case if you are re-recruiting a person who who had worked with the organization earlier, or uh, maybe a retired person uh, from your organization, then also you know the strength and weakness of that person. Second is more accurate view of candidate skills because you know that person already. In case if also you are generating a referral, then you can take uh, feedback from the person who has referred that particular person. So you know more uh, accurately what the candidate is like. candidates more committed to the company because that the candidate is already working with the organization or or has worked in the past with the, with the organization so the commitment or the belongingness towards the organization would be high even when you talk about generating referrals a person who has been referred by uh, the current employee of the organization that person would definitely have more uh, commitment towards the organization because there is on all you know already there is a person working in the organization whom he knows so that commitment factor is more increase employee morale and less orientation needed why less orientation is needed because already the uh, employee knows about the organization he has worked with the organization in the past too so he doesn't uh, need lot of orientation disadvantages are failed applicants becomes discontented what happens is that uh, you know just in case if you have a position vacant inside and you ask people to apply for it who are already working in the organization so they in case if they de doesn't get chosen so they might feel demotivated or just in case if uh, uh, let's say you had referred a particular person for a position and that person was not called even for the interview so then you would find a little a uh, uh, position not very happy time wasted interviewing internal candidates who will not be considered this is something that can happen even with the external recruitment and inbreeding inbreeding what happens is that a person who is already working in your organization would not have lot of uh, uh, innovative ideas a person who is coming from the external environment let's say from your competitor company would have lot of different views too of doing that particular work so inbreeding uh, leads to lack of generation of uh, innovative idea so that is one definite uh, disadvantage of internal recruitment uh when we talk about external recruitment then uh, you can look into uh, picking up people from trade associations advertisements in newspapers or in um, webs or on websites employment exchange which is being created by the government too uh, government has these employment exchange wherein uh, the, it's a platform wherein the employer can meet tentative uh, or uh, potential employees campus recruitment going to the colleges and picking up uh, uh, students who can work for your organization walk-ins write-ins and tokens uh, 
you just uh, uh, you know if in case if you put an ad in the newspaper or um, you um, say you know you put a put an advertisement that on this particular date we would be having uh, our interviews so there can be a lot of people who would just walk in and even at times it happens is that uh, when you talk about good organizations they have uh, a drop box wherein people can come and uh, put their resumes they can drop their resumes consultants contractors acquisition and merger and competitors consultants and contractors are the people who work as uh, a mediator and they help uh, the uh, employer to meet the empl uh, the potential employees the only difference between a consultant and a contractor is that a consultant does uh, major work of recruitment he doesn't leave it to the organization they do a lot of work wherein they not only do the recruitment but also helps the organization to screen and to select the right candidate wherein contractors are people who are just bring bringing the people to the organization and uh, in let's say they do not participate in the selection process acquisition and merger of course in case if there is an acquisition and merger that happens all of a sudden the number of employees working in an organization would get increased because uh, the new company with whom you've joined already has a lot of employees working competitors you pick up uh, people from your competitor organization so that is again an external recruitment when we talk about the advantages and disadvantages uh, let's just first cover up the advantages lower cost to the organization why lower cost to the organization because in case if uh, like we discussed the uh, advantages and disadvantages of internal source of recruitment similarly external sources of recruitment also have certain advantages and disadvantages uh, the advantage is that new employees bring innovation because these uh, employees are, have, are not the part of organization. Uh, of They are coming from somewhere, uh, some, maybe some other organization or they are absolutely fresh, uh, 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 freshers. So they bring in a lot of innovation and uh, they can help in improving the procedures and policy of the organization. A can come to know competitor strategy from these uh, new employees that you hire of course these employees would be coming from some of your competitors so you can even come to know that what are the competitor strategy what are those things that your, the competitor your competitor is doing so that also becomes uh, helpful candidates are more committed to the company because uh, when they join an organization they would put in more efforts to become stable in the organization maybe to uh, clear their their probation pre period and to become permanent employee in the organization they'll put in more efforts and so they have a lot of uh, high morale when we talk about disadvantages of course the procedure is time taking because you are uh, uh, inviting applications from outside so that might take certain time uh, it becomes costly because my, you might even um, think of advertising in a newspaper or maybe you would hire a consultant or you may um, uh, take uh, some uh, membership of a job portal so that takes a little it becomes a little costly you do not know the candidate's strength and weakness because this person is absolutely new to you so then the it becomes even more important that the selection procedure has to be very very correct and the reliability factor is less because you do not know this person so whatever information that he is giving he or she you have to rely on that and then it's not uh, always uh, that the candidates give the right information so these are certain disadvantages which are associated with external sources of recruitment these days a lot of companies follow e-recruiting which is using job portals for example when we talk about india you have uh, job portals like knockery.com monster uh, the corporates they can uh, they get login ids for these uh, from job portals wherein there are a lot of candidates who have uploaded their resume and the moment you um, post a job post you make a job posting on these portals it can be viewed by uh, all those uh, uh, people who have uploaded their cv on that particular uh, website so there are a lot of advantages to it that it is a lower cost to the organization because through one uh, login id that you get you can uh, 
recruit lot of people for different positions so it's not that for every position you have to pay to a consultant for example you know when we talk about consultants how do they uh, earn money they take uh, at least one month at least uh, a fees or which is equivalent to one month salary of the person who has been recruited so that's a lot of money when we talk about uh, job portals it is only one time payment that you make to the uh, 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 to the person who owns the website and um, then you can recruit a number of people through the job portal throughout the year. Uh, there is no intermediary because uh, of course you, do, you are not dealing with the consultant, you are doing it all direct through the help of internet. So uh, you, you would be able to screen the resumes yourself. Reduction in the time for recruitment because as I said that in case if a consultant is involved you will first be telling or explaining the things to the consultant then the consultant would be uh, getting uh, job applications for you whereas when we talk about e-recruiting you do it yourself on the websites on the job portal so it becomes easy improved efficiency of recruitment process because you understand what and how which type of empl uh, employees you want and you can choose these employees directly 24 7 access to the online collection of resumes you can even do this sitting um, at home so it becomes convenient Disadvantages is low internet access in case if you do not have internet access, of course, it's a problem. Cannot be only source. You cannot use e-recruiting only as one only as the source of recruitment because uh, uh, definitely at times campus recruitment or uh, uh, getting uh, people from your competitors becomes uh, are also very important. And uh, low preference because uh, when you look into these job portals, it's like, everyone each and every person who wants a job has uh, put their resumes on the uh, job portal so at times it becomes difficult to find out the right kind of a person but yes of course e-recruiting is very very uh, effective these days once we are through with the recruitment procedure the next process is selection um, as we have already discussed recruitment is a positive process in which we attract as many as job applicants as possible for the vacancy that we have in our organization. Selection is just the opposite. It is the negative process in which uh, we try to differentiate among applicants in order to identify and hire those with a greater likelihood of success in a job. So let's say in case if we have got 100 applications in the during the recruitment process, what we actually do is in selection is that we uh, filter these 100 applications step by step. Uh, that is a long procedure of selection that I would be discussing in the coming slides. So as of now, just understand that in selection, we are trying to uh, uh, filter the job applicants that we had received during recruitment. This is the selection process wherein uh, there is a small preliminary interview, selection test, employment interview, reference and background uh, analysis, Selection, decision, medical examination, job offer, employment contract and evaluation. Now let's go through this uh, step by step. What happens is that as uh, uh, we receive the job applications during the recruitment process, we pick up these job applications on the resumes and we try to filter out these resumes. Uh, in case if we find somebody who is a particular resume which is suitable for the profile, we do an pr a preliminary interview. We ask the person to come down in the uh, office and we take an interview or a telephonic interview can be taken. There are various different selection tests which are done. These tests we would be discussing in the coming slides like a written test, a psychological test. Many different types of tests are taken based upon the kind of a profile for which the person has applied. For example, if it is uh, uh, the vacancy is for an IT position and then maybe some kind of uh, test related to the uh, IT would be taken similarly uh, different tests are taken and finally one more uh, employment interview is taken um, reference and background analysis is very important um, when the uh, applications come or in the resume the uh, previous organizations are mentioned as in where the person had worked earlier so then uh, the HR department ensures that they take ref uh, references from the uh, uh, applicant and a background analysis is done a background check is done that how was the uh, person's performance in the previous organizations once the reference and background analysis comes positive then uh, 
of course it is uh, a positive step wherein uh, uh, the applicant moves to the next level in case if a medical examination is required it is done and then the job offer is made the salary is fixed with discussed with the uh, applicant and a job offer is given once the a uh, job offer is received by the applicant the applicant comes and joins the organization and it is then that the employment letter uh, is given to the uh, uh, applicant which confirms the employment of the uh, applicant in the organization evaluation is something which is done later on maybe every organization has a, a, a probation period which ranges from 6 months to 1 year usually so once the uh, new employee finishes the probation period then an evaluation is done uh, looking into the performance of uh, the individual it is decided that whether the probation after the probation period the uh, employee should be confirmed as a permanent employee of the organization or not so this is the selection process um, this is a, a very important slide i'll go through the bullet points one by one developing and using application forms what happens is that once they uh, a person is called for an interview there is an application form which is used the application form helps in getting all the information about the applicant uh, related to education prior work record and skills and what is the use of this application form is that all the information is collected in a very crisp manner from the applicant uh, judgments about the applicant's education and experience qualifications can be made through this application form conclusion about the applicant's pre previous progress and growth can also be made because certain questions can be introduced in the application form as in rate your own uh, performance in the previous form what kind of achievements and awards did you receive in your previous organization so some additional information which the applicant has not mentioned in the resume can be collected through the application form indications of the applicant's um, employment stability um a particular uh, table is made in the application form which uh, in which the applicant is asked to fill the details about the previous uh, employments so from there you can easily uh, make out that whether the uh, applicant was stable in the previous organizations or was he uh, somebody who was always jumping uh, the organizations uh, so these are certain information that can be collected from the application form as in the selection procedure i had mentioned that there are certain selection tests which the uh, applicant goes through these could be intelligence test to measure the iq level of a person aptitude test aptitude test today in the today's world has become very very important because this is something which tells about the aptitude of a person whether uh, the person is a negative thinker or a positive thinker whether the person would be able to work in teams or not personality test if you've heard of uh, tests like mbti and uh, tests like uh, uh, 5rob these are certain personality tests from which you can find out that whether the person is an extrovert or an introvert whether the person thinks or perceives with how uh, the person take makes uh, decisions these are something that can be uh, figured out through the personality tests interest tests trade proficiency tests like for example i told you that uh, in case if the person it has is being recruited for some particular uh, it position so a test can be taken related to that uh, area graphology test is something which is related to handwriting testing from the handwriting the psychologists can make out what kind of a person the, uh, he or she is so again it is something to know the psychology of a person and medical test if required through all these tests you can e easily judge what the person is like where does the person stand in the professional world and these tests become very very important so that you can uh, you are able to hire the right kind of a person for your organization now these tests should be reliable valid should be objective and should be standardized what do you mean by reliability and validity reliability is that uh, what uh, the information uh, or the questions that you have put uh, in the uh, questionnaire or in the test um they are reliable enough that they would be uh, able to get the right information from a person as i told you uh, previously about mbti tests and uh, other psychological psychological uh, tests or psychometric tests these tests are scientifically made in a way that uh, the um, 
a right kind of information is gathered about the applicant once the applicant goes through these tests so reliability means that uh, these tests are reliable enough that correct information would be gathered through these tests validity is if the test is valid today it should be valid after 3 years also this is called as validity that even if you take uh, uh, if an applicant uh, attends this uh, test twice thrice in different uh, times the result would come the same that is called as the validity objectivity these tests should be objective it should not be that uh, the tests are very very theoretical because in case if the tests are theoretical then the evaluation does is not uh, uh, very objective it might differ when you uh, if you have uh, gone through certain examinations you must have seen two types of question papers come objective question paper and subjective now subjective in a subjective question paper it might happen that uh, the person who is evaluating has different evaluating criteria but when it is an objective type test it has to be a yes or no it it will be right or wrong it will be a plus one or a minus one it can not be anything else so all the tests that uh, are given to the application applicants they should be objective in a way that uh, uh, no biasness is involved in the test and they should be standardized that uh, whoever whichever applicant comes to the organization would have to go through all these tests it should not happen that one applicant is taking uh, a test a and the other applicant is taking test b that should not happen all the applicants should go through the same selection procedure and the, through the same selection test these selection tests are very very important because through this you are uh, evaluating the applicants and uh, whoever does the best gets selected but there are certain barriers to effective selection what happens is that there is some kind of biasness which is involved as i mentioned that in case if the test is not reliable or it is not valid then of course the selection procedure gets affected the interviewer's perception affects the selection criteria in case if there is some kind of biasness then of course the selection will not be fair so these are certain things that might affect the uh, selection procedure but should not be affecting every organization should ensure that the barriers to selection procedure should be less once the selection is done and the job offer is given to the person and the person comes and joins the organization the first thing which is done uh, is induction or an orientation program it is a systematic and planned introduction of employees to their jobs their co-workers and the organization the induction or the orientation procedure uh varies from organization to organization uh in certain organization it is just for 2 3 days or a single day in certain organizations for a week or a month so what actually is done during this time is that the employee the new employee is being told everything about the organization what is the vision mission of the organization what does the organization wants from the employees what are the policies of the organization then he is introduced to his department his team members his boss everything so it conveys broadly three types of information about the daily work routine a review of firm's history a description about the employee's job contributes to the organization needs and the organization policies and procedure so everything the employee uh, needs to know about the organization is being told to the employee during this uh, time what are the requirements of an effective orientation program prepare for new employees determine determine information new employees want to know determine how to present information and completion of the paperwork once the induction is done then finally comes placement it refers to the allocation of people to jobs so finally the person who has joined the organization is placed at the right position in the organization placement doesn't even uh, involve uh, placing the new uh, recruits but it also includes uh, promotion transfer and demotion of the current employees so this is something uh, with this we come to the end of recruitment and selection procedure thank you so much for watching this video i hope recruitment and selection were are clear to you uh, both the procedures go hand in hand first recruitment is done and then selection is done thank you so much for watching this video hope you would be watching the other videos too thank you